thank you very much for everyone coming here on a Sunday afternoon to our talk about American and Portland City. And thank you for Denise and Jane give me uh, directions about what I should talk and what should I uh, um, focus on. And um, there's a lot of story to tell um, from Gina Jun. And so I specifically that kind of uh, focus on my life living in between and also the big part that I, how I developed into that. So the differences that I have from, with the other two speakers, um, I myself is born in Hong Kong, and I start to do ceramic in pottery workshops in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a metropolitan city, a high-rise building, very crowded, small apartments, very expensive, near by the water, sounds like in New York. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I was not professionally trained in Hong Kong as a, as a potter. Um, I'm an actress. And, but after work, I went to pottery workshop to just get meditating, wherever, sand, and just get rid of all these frustrations and rehearsal in my mind so that I can concentrate. And I really fall in love with it. And um, so that's how I start with my ceramic. So in 1989, I migrated to Canada with the reasons of uh, my family that afraid that I will be got caught by the secret police because as a Chinese um, in Hong Kong, I was an actress and I do a lot of uh, actress uh, and then also do performance uh, on the street, but I'm not that kind of activist and activist, but as you all really have a heart on the students and the whole incidents of the massacre of uh, Tiananmen Square, you all walk on the streets. And at that time, there were about, about um, uh, 10,000, 20,000 people marched on, on the street in Hong Kong. So, but that's only the side story, but then the key is after migrated to Canada, and I was trying to do ceramic, but I'm not, the, the life has kind of flowed. And um, so I get accepted in a program in Sheridan College and transferred to the Scotia College of Art and Design to finish my BFA study. And I met a wonderful mentor, Walter Ostrom, in Canada, Nova Scotia. And he taught me about Chinese ceramic. And I would just say, what? What did I know about myself? I'm Chinese. I didn't know about what porcelain is. I didn't know what blue and white is. And I even don't, I ate rice out of my bowl every day. So at that time, it was in 1996, which is after Wen Hebi started the program with Jinder Jin Ceramic Institute. Um, Walter Ostrom is an honorable professor. So um, he went there for teaching. And I asked him, Walter, uh, took me with you. I can translate for you. I know Chinese. <laughs> and then he said, no, I don't need you. I have someone, personal translator for me. So I didn't give up. And ultimately, it worked out. So I went to China. And I learned Jing De Zhen, which I try to learn as much as I can in two weeks. No three months, every workshop two weeks. And so I learned pouncing, which you see that on the uh, slides, the most traditional way of transferring uh, patterns on, on the slip cast uh, pillow. And I went out on the streets, and you, know, you won't see that photos uh, seen anymore, because the soccer field with all those big parts and blue and white are selling on the soccer field. It already becomes a people's square for um, other activities. Um, so I saw that big part. I really wanted to hug it and make it. So I went back to my studio in Louisiana State University. At that time, I do my MFA. And I throw and then coil and throw and coil with my big part by myself in the, stu in the studio and use a fine brush to paint my blue and white pattern. After the firing, you can see the very top part of it, it's collapsed. And I spent hours and hours and months and months 
using the fine brush to do this painting. So I'm really desperate and disappointed. So, but I try to uh, live with it, and then I make some smaller version. So based on the idea of the past and present, east and west, and displacement and identity that I asking myself a question. So I chose porcelain because that was my roots, my heritage, and the most kind of uh, fundamental kind of parts form with neck, shoulder, belly, and foot. It's just like describing a person. So on the slide on the right-hand side, um, it's called identity. So symbols, icons, are all my uh, grammar languages on my part. So you can see that kind of uh, uh, linguistic kind of fulu show, okay? Longevity, blessing, and also my identification card from Canada, from the United States, from China, Hong Kong, all around it. But I leave one space empty, because that's what I wanted to have another one. I don't know what that is yet. <laughs> and, um, but I try to also keep the integrity of the Gongbi, which is one of the finest um, painting that using a fine brush in Qinghua painting. Qinghua, it means blue and white. So the line, oops, the lines over there here is keep the kind of um, elastic and lively kind of uh, motion. And using my Chinese name as part of the uh, motif, and here is my identification card from Hong Kong. If you look at carefully along the line here, this is not line. I change it to draw my English name, Xin Jing Ho, because I was asking myself, once I move out from Hong Kong, in Hong Kong I was called Cassandra, and then in the state or Canada, I prefer myself called Xin Jing Ho, because it's a Hong Kong British colonial name. So I dealt with also language. Language has become my barrier in anything that I did for my life. So I use the mapping form on the left-hand side, and then the right-hand side is my version. Chinese language, it's right vertical, and then English, it's horizontal. From right to left, and then from left to right. It's a poem that I write by uh, Susa. And in between, the language that you can see all this, I call this piece called gibberish, which is all this uh, computer code that you cannot translate, interrupt the all the languages, talk about communication nowadays in technology. The other piece is called Plenty of Luck, also related to language. So here you can see Dai Zhi, which is Dai Gat, the bat, which refer to rebus, of uh, Fu. When you click, get a closer look, you can see all the little triangle. It's international signage about like, be careful, don't get closer. So plenty of luck, okay? So the Chinese word, which is uh, formed with the English word, plenty of luck. The, all this triangle is all transfer decal, which is I learned from the Western artist technique that we invented from our own home computer. This piece is called Confucius, Jesus Christ, and John Langdon. <laughs> and um, I was almost play a play. It was uh, a play written by the Chinese uh, uh, playwright, Sam Yisun. Um, but in Hong Kong, or when I grew up, I, in the Confucius um, kind of uh, 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 culture, and I went to church when I was in high school and listened to the music of John Langdon. So that's how we struggle when we are living in all these different uh, in between. This is another size of the same part, which Jesus Christ playing guitar, John Lennon is a thinker, and then Confucius the observer. So kind of a little more humorous on my back of my mind. So not just only the Eastern form and the Western form. If you look at this one, which is the Western form we from uh, the uh, Abella, from uh, the pharmacy jar from Italy, so 
but how about also collided not just the images, but form. So this is a mold making, so I make the form, I throw and cut and make the mold. And we find the most kind of renowned uh, 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 civilizations, such as Mayan, Roman, Celtic, and Chinese, and Persian. So I do the all painted with a small brush in the small pieces when I was started at uh, this project. John uh, Benny Spear, music as part of the language. And um, so I uh, using the decal and how uh, Britney Spears become part of the culture in my, uh, in my surrounding. So in 90, um, so I have been go back and forth many times in Jindajan, but part of workshop set up an international residency in Jindajan, and my dear friend Caroline Chan is that come over, where I have a Caroline Chan hotel for you. So this is where the part two workshop, when I first, seen, uh, uh, when I first uh, participated, which is about 2006. And the artist is there is uh, Takashi Yoshida, and some other artists is all around the world, from Denmark, from uh, Japan, from Taiwan, Switzerland, really, really international. So this is how it looked out, um, look out from the uh, window of the studio. So one thing that I couldn't really figure it out at that time, because in the, West, in the Western culture and Western education, when I learned making ceramics, we would mix our own clay and own glaze and painted it and fire it, even though put it into the show. Everything one person done, which is seven people work almost. But then when I was in Jinnijin, I experienced, wow, that people can make more for you or cast for you, I couldn't believe it. And I resisted it because I have been already have this kind of uh, perceiving notion that I have to do things by myself, understanding Chinese ceramics inside out, upside down. But you have to try because it's experience. So I make my mold, and then there has a uh, Zhou Shifu and uh, uh, Wang Shifu, which actually is a f coming from a national factory that they cannot, the, the, the factory kind of um, bankrupt so that they are unemployed. They set up the studio to help others to do work. But then, next one. So this is the mold that Joseph will make for me and then cast it. And you can even go to the glaze shop to buy glaze. Ask people to spray your pieces. This is just kind of bizarre and real, unrealistic to me. But it does happen. So even though they have a puppy kiln that you can fire your work, but I didn't paint anything because I wanted to try whether it works, whether it collapses. So I have all this mold. This is my husband, Philip Reed, and he's also an artist with me. We pack all the mold back and ship it back to the United States. And I started to question and paint and think about content. So this is the piece called Make in a Postmodern Era, which I have Andy Warhol on, on top of Chairman Mao, Marilyn Monroe, and Mona Lisa, which Andy Warhol was using on his print. But historically, Chinese are do an apprentice. The main dynasty port painted by the Qing dynasty uh, uh, artisan. And the history was carry on and carry on. I just continue as part of the history. This is called Unity. And I also play it with um, corporate logos such as Coca Cola and McDonald's and all these kind of different symbols, languages which is like what I've been surrounded in this global world. I grew up with the story of uh, uh, Journey to the West, and I also grew up with the story of E.T., Charlie Brown, and Hello Kitty. This kind of popular culture, but also collided with a historical folklore. When it was 70, that I was growing up with the Tiwi that I can see, Bruce Lee and also uh, Muhammad Ali, 
doing the boxing on the, on the, uh, on the screen. So I was uh, inspired by a movie called Couching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. So this is title for the show, for the piece. So I was learning from panzing, but then now I'm going to do it on like um, uh, projecting and then using the fine brush to practice. This is another time I went to China just to focus on practicing about my blue and white. And also observe about the life in Jinajun, how the children play and what they play now, TV game, laptop. So I got a grant and I decided that that's about almost 10 years. I needed to make my dream come true. And also, what's the content of the piece? So I decided at that time, which is 2008, when the stock market, stock market collapsed. And um, I think about Garden of Eden, because I have the commission to do a courtyard installation. Everything has to be about gardens and flowers. So I choose Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, but it's not religiously, but it's also based on, it is based on about the metaphor about um, ble uh, Eden. It's a place for people to love, to please, to imagine, to embrace. So I make this uh, uh, part, I paint it on it, and then transfer detail. You can see all those uh, stock market uh, drop and go back up later. <laughs> it, this piece is called In the Dream of Hope. Also looking at China with this kind of uh, uh, materialistic life, kind of getting higher and uh, booming, this is a Chinese money with all this corporate logo, with PRJ, with credit card, and so this is called Temptation, the Life of Good. Uh, model of board, technology. People always want to transform themselves. So butterfly is symbolized as a transformation. And this is where the Adam and Eve, that is already being made with a mother uh, chipboard. So after that, the Adam and Eve, I think about that in Queens College or the area that I live with. We spoke, we, we can find about like 176 languages in my campus. So I went online and then find out there are about 46 languages, which is say one word, many peoples. So I create this piece called One World, Many Peoples. I have put it on the indoor and the outdoor with the uh, installations in Burlington Art Center and also Queens College. The pieces in the middle is the tallest P, it's taller than my president. But I want to talk about that when you do the big pieces that I was thinking about how to transport because I'm only by myself with a five feet tall woman. How can I transport the seven feet tall and then about 500 pounds of a pot? So I designed the crate first before I designed my pot. <laughs> I tried to physicality that kind of connected with my work because I was an actress before. I like experience. Experience is the most important thing for me. So I throw with the uh, thrower together. I trim with the trimmer together. Try to build the sense of belonging, the sense of ownership. But of course, I cannot done it by myself. So this is how they stack the five sections together. And then look back to the first part I make by myself in the studio. This is a big difference. So this is how I, the form is finished. And I have this opportunity to really mapping, sketching, painting with the whole part which is bigger than my size. It's really overwhelming. And I have students willing to learn and come to cut decal with me. And I didn't let them just cut by myself. I cut with them because I want to be with it. And I stand on the scaffold and then the stool to line up all this, make up all this kind of decal. So this is from the small part to the part that I really embrace and hug. And I still want to hug them so much. Now I become a professor in the Queen's College as associate uh, professor. I started to bring my student to China to learn this kind of unforgettable, it's 
tremendously amazing kind of a blue and white technique and decal. And my life is surrounded with students and my, and my husband. So this summer, last summer, we were participating for the Porcelain International uh, Show. And um, this is his painting. Um, he is actually is Caucasian, but also really in love and practiced Chinese painting for 30 years. And one day, we hope we can collaborate it into the big tiles and put it in the kiln together. And now I'm living in between two studios. One is in New York, Long Island City, and then the other one is in Jinajin, um, nearby the pottery workshop, China. Thank you very much.